Hey everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. Today we are going through, we are starting off a list miss with a bang. We're going through our holiday shopping guide. We're gonna talk about some family games, we're gonna talk about some kids games, we're gonna talk about some strategy games that we think would be a great fit for you and your families. One of the caveats we had for creating this list was we are only gonna talk about games that are readily available and you would be able to get if they sounded interesting to you. So because of that, there are maybe some games we didn't mention and also we didn't wanna give you a shot shopping guide of 100 games. So we had to limit it. That's right. We had to limit it. And we are going to start with our kids games because as many of you know, we have children. So when we're talking about kids games, we're thinking of kids in between the ages of eight and four because our children are eight and four. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's our sweet spot. Uh, that's true for you. Then these games might be of interest. Uh, so be sure to check it out. Uh, do you want to go first? Or do you want me to? I would love to go first. So the first game I want to talk about is Dragomino. This is basically an introductory to tile laying games. You are drafting these tiles to try to get pieces to connect so that way you can get these baby dragon eggs. And some of them have dragons Baby dragon in them. game. Yeah, baby dragon game. That's what our daughter used to call it. Um, some of them have dragons in them. Some of them don't. And you just add them up at the end. It's so simple. It's so slick. Our four-year-old can play it, by uh, not by herself, but she can set it up, right? She knows how to do it. She knows how to set it up. She knows that the flag are the starting pieces, and she is ready to go. So um, one of my recommendations is Jack Domino. Also, this isn't a list of, like, my number one recommendation to my least recommendation. There's These are games that we out. think that you would like in any order that you see fit. Yeah. All right, so I want to talk about Inspector Mouse. This is a game from Haba. If you're familiar with the kids' game market, you know that Haba is always putting out great games with great components. Uh, this is no different. This one in particular... Uh, is a, a kind of a memory game. There's these suspects that are trying to escape. They're digging this tunnel, uh, but this tunnel is all hidden from the players. At the end of it, there's a way that the tiles drop out of the bottom, land on this alarm, and at that point, you have to kind of remember which escape, which convict or which you know suspect is escaping, which was one was the first one we put in that tunnel, and which way was it turning at the time. And you have to remember it. If you're able to remember it, remember it crap properly. Remember it properly, <laughs> you're gonna get a point. Uh, and this is crazy, chaotic, fun. The characters and the artwork are great. The uh, the mouse rotating piece is this really yeah. clever mechanism. Overall, this is a great one. And they did a good job grouping the characters too. So yeah. you don't have to remember like 12 different people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so speaking of Haba, the other one that we wanna talk about is Valley of the Vikings. This is just a hilarious dexterity game. So you're on corners of the board and you're trying to knock down these barrels, right? With this like little kicker thing and this ball going through and depending on who you... Hey, yeah! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I tried to hold it in, couldn't do it. <laughs> okay. Could do a second tape, we won't. <laughs> who you knock over but that determines how your character moves on this tracker up there and when the first person gets off that tracker that's when you score things um and it's super fun and it's strategic right you want to knock over certain barrels but you also don't want to knock down certain barrels and sometimes you can't help it and sometimes like the little kids are just like bam everybody's gone or bam and the ball goes like off the table and it's just it's always hilarious when we play this game. Um, and the kids, I think, really like setting it up because it's like there's these six puzzle pieces, essentially, when you're setting this game up. And I think the kids really like putting all that together. All right, so the next kids game I want to talk about is Scythe. We're not from... talking... No. Yeah, Scythe from Stonewire Games. No. No? That's not on a kid's list. Oh, My Little Scythe. What about that one? Oh, yeah, sure, that's fine. My Little Scythe, this is, of course, inspired by Scythe, as well as probably like some My Little Ponies, right? Put them together, you get My Little Scythe. This is, if you're familiar with Scythe, a lot of the mechanisms in My Little Scythe are going to be very familiar to you. You are running around the board, you're trying to fulfill these objectives, get points from a lot of different ways, but it's all kind of kidified, right? Instead of throwing, you know, you're, instead of doing battle, you're having a pie fight. <laughs> instead of trying to gain, you know, uh, you know, uh, what is the, in, in Scythe, the popularity or whatever, you're trying to gain friendship points. There's all these different things that you can do to earn points as well, and similar to Scythe, the first one to get to that, that threshold is going to win the yeah. game. The, it's this beautiful, uh, you know, this chibi style minis, there's really, really nice sculpts, uh, the artwork is just really kid-friendly, everything about it is 
is is nice and it's a little bit complicated this is not you know the four side this is going to be the seven or eight year old yeah, side of definitely. things but if you are a gaming parent who wants to play scythe with your kid at some point or games like that in that complex realm this is a fantastic stepping stone uh and again it's just what a great you know presentation overall. If you would like just a randomizer in the game, though, you can definitely play with your four-year-old. Our four-year-old 100% <laughs> gets the rules. She actually knows the rules and can play the game. No she strategy. No strategy whatsoever. <laughs> zero, she might end the game with zero points, but she's going to have a lot of fun doing it. And, and she's going to mess all of us up. A complete agent of chaos all throughout the game. <laughs> all right, so the last one we want to talk about for our Kids Gaming Guide is Chicken Chicken. So this is a speed memory game, right? And so you you're flipping these cards and you're trying to remember when there's been at least five eggs, but there's different things that can make it to where you reveal it at the end and there are not five eggs. Now, the thing that's awesome about this game is you can level it to your child. So there's a bunch of different cards you can add in that do a lot of different things with the deck as it happens, or you can just go straight to the base game and just play like that. So we are playing with um, some of our relatives and our niece was just way too good at this, right? <laughs> so we had to add in all this other stuff because she was just beating everybody to the punch. But you know, you add in more stuff, she's still the only one beating everybody <laughs> <laughs> to the punch. But this was a great one because you can definitely level it and it can age with your kid. All right, so those were games that were focusing on kids, for kids' enjoyment, right? Yeah. So now we're going to transition into family games. These are games that any one of the whole family is going to enjoy, from the kids to the adults to the grandparents. Uh, these are games that are, have wider appeal and usually have easier rule set, too, so they can appeal to non-gamers as well. Yeah. But not necessarily games that are going to transition them into gamers. This is just games you can have fun with over the yeah. holidays or whatever as, with, with family. All right, so the first one I want to talk about, let's go with Trekking the National Parks. If you have played a game, let's say, like Ticket to Ride, it's of a similar difficulty complexity level to Ticket to Ride. Um, basically, you are just kind of roaming the board. You are roaming and trekking between these different national parks all over the board. You're flying or walking between them. Uh, the artwork is all about these really, really amazing pictures and landscapes of these different national parks all over the United States. It features a ton of them. It's got a really cool backstory. I won't get into that right now. Uh, but it's, a, it's a, a weight that everybody can enjoy. It's a complexity level that it just has a very wide appeal, a theme that's got yeah. very wide appeal, easy to understand rule set, but it's a race to get to all these different uh, uh, national parks, and it's a lot of fun. Um, the other one that I want to talk about is Tranquility. This is a cooperative game, and it is tough, but not tough rule set. Right, you only have uh, one one of two options. You either play a card or you can discard a card, can't you? Sure. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> all it is, so you have this grid and you are trying to line things up from the lowest to the highest number in order to do that. But every time you place a card next to another card, you have to discard based on the difference between those two numbers. And cards are life. So as soon as there's no more cards to draw, you are out, like you lose the game. So simple, it's so smooth, it's so pretty on on the game as as the cards go across. Love it. It is a great one. It is just fantastic. So one of the things that kind of falls into the family game arena for us at least is party games. One of the ones I want to talk about is wavelength. Wavelength. Uh, wavelength. <laughs> you are That's giving a, a, game, right? a something like that. You're giving a spectrum. A lot of them are, are easy kind of opposites, like hot to cold, uh, round to rough, or spiky, or something like that, right? Yeah. And other of the cards are a little more nuanced and subtle. One of the ones that we had that we really enjoyed was one that said, "From on a scale from commerce to art, where yeah. something lied." And that was a really interesting concept, right? So the person who's going to be the clue giver, they randomize this this wheel, and it tells you, gives you a, where you are on that on that spectrum. Let's say between hot and cold, uh, you're given this slice right here. You know, and then you have to uh, come up with a clue to give to your team to convey where you are on that scale. So you might say, I don't know, an ice cube that is uh, starting to melt. All right, so then the, the team argues amongst themselves, okay, so it's on the cold side, but it's starting to melt, so maybe it's a little bit higher or whatever it is. Yeah. And they kind of rationalize that. How would Ryan think? How What was Ryan thinking of when he gave that clue? What does he think that we think? What does he think society thinks? And you guys like to do this huge <laughs> mental battle. You can't you say do. anything as a clue giver. Really and eventually uh, they make a decision. They, they, they make a, a choice of where they think it is on the spectrum. The other team gets a chance to respond as well, get some points on that way. Baby you, seal. Yeah, you do a reveal ultimately, and then bam, 
to see if you're right or wrong. It always erupts in a ton of a discussion and an rupture of laughter, and you're figuring out, why did you yeah. say that? Why didn't you say ice cream? I mean, whatever it is. And it's just so much fun. Uh, I will say this one, uh, especially when you get into the more nuanced cards and the more advanced cards, there are some topics that might come up that are, you know, not kid-friendly. You start talking about politics or whatever, maybe you want to be more choosy with those cards around certain family yeah. members or whatever. Put, you know, put, Take that with a grain of salt. Uh, but overall, this game is just so much fun. The discussions that come out of it every time are memorable. Uh, great family and friends experience. You know it's a game that plays just as many players as that, but you don't have to worry about taking out cards? Okay. Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. I was born ready. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, it's hues and cues, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a game that can be played for players age like 4 to 99, right? Because you're just, there's the colors on the board and you're trying to get people to guess where your color is or you're trying to guess where other people's color is. So this is a game that the whole family can really play, right? So you can, um, the, you know, four-year-old can give a clue and a four-year-old can also guess. They might be crazy when doing it. Not speaking from experience or anything, <laughs> but they can still participate and they can still play. So it's really a game that's engaging for literally all ages. Yeah, and on top of that, uh, it is so much fun. And you're trying to actually trying to get people to guess your clue. You get benefits from yeah. them guessing your clue. Yeah, it's not like you're trying to be. Trying to be weird. Yeah, you're not no, trying you to want get them. You want yeah. the cooperation of your opponents to get your after everybody for has yourself. guessed. You place this thing on the board, and for every person that's inside that, you get more points. For every person that's on the outside edge, you also get points, but not as many as inside. So you want people to be. It's within you. that grid, not yeah. outside of that grid. See, the thing is, though, they also get points. So depending on where people are throughout the game, the you, might, they are, the you might want them to be close, but you don't want them to be that close. <laughs> All right, so the last thing we're talking about for the family category is a game called Sagrada. This is, you're trying to build a stained glass window using dice. These clear, uh, translucent dice, which are really, really pretty. There's various colors, and obviously when you roll them, there are different number values. As you're kind of building your stained glass window, no colors can touch the same, no numbers can touch the same. Uh, and you all have different varieties of difficulties, but you have special abilities that are going to help you out as well. You can pay certain, basically victory points, in order to unlock these abilities that allow you to draft in a certain order or change the, the color, change the number, whatever the case is. Uh, it's a ton of fun. It looks really, really good when it's all done, and it takes hardly any time at all. This is a 20-minute game. Yeah. Uh, but... It's a game that is, is, I would say, just out of the whole list. It's the most advanced, but at the same time, it's not. It's the rule set itself are easy. Yeah. It's just a matter of thinking ahead a little bit so you don't get boxed into a corner where you can't make any plays. And avoiding that is the tricky part of the game, but it's also part of the fun and the challenge of it all. So that is a game that we recommend for, for, for families. All right, on to our strategy list. And so we could have put so many games on this particular list. Like I said earlier, we tried, uh, not tried, we did do games that you are currently in print and you are able to get. And we tried to get newer games as well instead of just all of our old favorites that we wish everybody would own. <laughs> so with that said, and like I said, this could have been like a 20, 40, 60 game list. You can't do that. <laughs> and on top of that, this is, again, this is, the first two categories were had wider appeal. This category bit, is, is definitely narrowed. for people who have gaming experience, right? Yeah. They probably haven't even heard of some of these games. You want to uh, take that into account when you're, when you're using this as a shopping guide. Yeah. So the one that I want to talk about is On the Rocks. This is a game where you are creating different drinks, but it's a marble drafting game. And I just thought it was so cool that you're drafting these marbles to try to complete these drinks. The ones that have more marbles on them are obviously going to be worth more points, but they're going to be harder to complete. You can also play these spill cards that interact with players and kind of screw them up, but I don't really think it, it's that bad. Um, I, I like that. I liked the whole game. This is a game, basically for me, when we've played a lot of plays, we've reviewed it, and I still keep on wanting to go back to it. That's how I view this as a game that probably has a broad appeal in the gaming spectrum, and On the Rocks is definitely a game like that for me. All right, so the one I want to talk about is The Lost Ruins of Arnak. This is kind of an exploration game theme, thinking about like maybe uh, Indiana Jones style thing. But what you're doing is you're exploring the board, you're encountering these different monsters, you're gathering these different resources. Uh, there's a kind of an exploration track that you can go up. Basically, you only have two two explorers, two archaeologists on uh, that you can use every turn. There's only five turns, five rounds. So it's all you're guaranteed is ten actions the entire game. But the whole time, the challenge of it is Sounds trying to... stressful. And you're trying to manipulate the board so that you do get extra actions and you do get extra resources and you do get extra benefits. Uh, it is 
so, so tight and so much fun. I think the, where this game's strength is, is there is always a, a wealth of interesting, meaningful decisions that you can make on your turn. It doesn't seem like it at first, but as the board opens up, as you kind of get going, as you've built some resources up, uh, your final couple of turns are gonna be so exciting as you're kind of ramping up and building and building and building. I I can't uh, recommend this game highly enough. This is probably one of my games of the year as a hint uh, for the future, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I love The Lost Friends of Arnak. All right, the next one that I wanna talk about is Horrified and Shame on Us. We have not played the most recent one. But that's okay, that deals with a lot of cryptology animals. But the horrified that we're talking about deals with um, universal monsters, like the, the original set of those. And what's happening is on this board, they're out roaming the board, wrecking havoc to this town. And you guys are all working together to try and eliminate those threats. The thing is they all require different things in order for those threats to be eliminated by. So you're going around the board, you're trying to collect things, you're trying to save the townspeople, you're trying yourself not to get hurt while also eliminating the threat of these different monsters that are on the board. So so this is super fun. You see this on people's lists all the time. It's talked about all the time. You'll see pictures of this all the time because it's just a great game and appeals to so many different gamers and so many people like to play this game. So many people enjoy to play this game and it's like a good balance of lose to win. Well, that's because we play it like, we play with like four monsters. We like the default level. We have extra. a problem, okay? And we know it, but we're not addressing it. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> All right, so most of our plays, I'd say, you know, 51% of our plays are two-player games. So we wanted to put a two-player game on this list. I wanted to talk about, uh, this is, what well, I forgot the name of it is. This is Watergate. <laughs> Watergate is all about the Nixon-Watergate scandals. One player is playing as the, the FBI and the CIA, right, or whatever. They're trying to pin all this evidence to the Nixon administration. The other person is playing as the Nixon administration, trying to block off uh, the evidence from getting to them and being able to kind of pin, pin it back to them. There's literally a board that's similar to like those peg boards that you've seen with like string wrapped around them, like the conspiracy theorist boards or whatever. It's like that. But you're literally trying to string together these different... Um, evidences and, and people uh, to the Nixon administration um, or, or wall it off as if you're playing as the, as the Nixon administration before the game ends. Um, it's got a ton of history behind it. If someone is interested in that period of the history, the back, you know, I don't know, 10 pages of the rule book or something is just all about all these different card effects and what they really meant in real life, who these people were. Here in 2021, I would say that a lot of us maybe don't know all of the new... We just hear the Watergate scandal and we're like, oh, Nixon, I'm not a crook. You know, that's all we know, right? <laughs> that's all we think about, you know. But this gives all the background and the details of it. And it's just so, so interesting to hear all that history as well. So if you have a history buff or people who like to play two-player games or just want a great game, Watergate is a great one. Speaking of games, uh, two-player games, this is a game you do not want to play two-player. <laughs> <laughs> At least from our experience. Yeah, from our experience. So I really liked Moonrakers, and I feel like it would appeal to a lot of people. This is a, um, a deck-building game with negotiation in it, and because of that negotiation aspect of the game... Two it, players. It just doesn't... You, want, you want more players. You do want more players. So you are going up this track, you're trying to be the first person to get 10 points, and you're like, that's going to be easy. It's not... Psych, it's not easy, but you're trying to uh, go on these different missions based on the symbols that you have to see if you can try and complete it. Then you're trying to get other people to help you complete it, divvying out the, um, what, like, you can The rewards. Get. Yeah, the rewards of it, which is why... And it, the risks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's negative things that happen when you inevitably cannot accomplish this mission, which happens a lot. But because of that, it doesn't work great at two players because there's just no, like, you don't want to help somebody. It's just you and them. But multiple player, I think it works really well. It has this really subtle, um, like, dark, spacey outwork that I thought was great with the game, that it worked really well with the game. And so uh, Moonrakers is a great one, not for two players. All right, you guys, that is our holiday shopping guide. You know what? Let us know down below in the comments what categories you want to see next year. What categories would you want to hear about as a shopping guide? What are you hoping to get this Christmas? Tell us some games that you want to, you are hoping to get. <laughs> what do you uh, know you're getting? Because you're getting it for yourself and putting it under the tree. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, tell us all about that stuff. We would love to hear about it. You guys, this has been a, list, was a lot of fun to make, and there's a ton of games we could have added on to this. So there will definitely be, be more lists coming, because guess what? It's Listmas. Merry Listmas! More lists coming their, your way. So you want to subscribe, and you want to hit that notification bell, so you don't want to miss out on any of the lists coming your way this month. 
All right, where can you find us on social media? You can find us on Facebook, we're Ryan Bethany Board Game Reviews. On Twitter, we're Ryan Bethany One. And on Instagram, we are Ryan and Bethany. It's everywhere, everywhere. you want to be. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> you guys, we might even get on TikTok later. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, thanks so much for watching. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.